Hello everybody. Today's tutorial was a bit inspired by the Wikipedia logo. I checked in uh, the internet to see if someone has modeled a kind of jigsaw ball, but I didn't find anything. So let's do it. First I will activate Snap to Grid and then bring out a square with x and y subdivisions and I make it 3 by 3 millimeters. Then go to edge mode, Alt-C this one, Alt-C through here, then I select a circle with eight sides and bring it up out here, then select these polygons, delete, control copy, control V, W key and bring it to here. Now I shift C through this one, shift click through here, drop the tool, uh, disable grid snapping, we don't need it anymore, and hit the B key for bevel, bevel this in, about like so. Then I can delete this half and this quarter, delete, we don't need this here, delete, and Next, I select these edges, hit the Set key for Edge Extend, right click to activate the tool and then hit the R key on the blue circle and bring this to about here, drop the tool. I can now delete these parts here, delete, select these. Shift C again, Shift C and cut through here, Shift click, cut through here, middle mouse button cut through here and Shift click, cut through here. Drop the tool. <coughs> now I select an edge in here, Alt C and we can delete these two polygons and I must bring up this edge a bit oops not this one W key bring it to here drop the tool now let's check this word goes to here, these ones are merged together, this one goes to here and now I should be able to close this here, so one, two, three, four, hit the P key, go to edge mode, select these edges, P key again, now I can select these edges here, go to Edge Bridge and now I put an edge in here. I found out that it's really, really very important that we get a nice mesh for the puzzle or the jigsaw part. I only have one all the same, you will see later. So. B for bevel, bevel this till we have three segments about the same size. Then I cut through here, cut one through here, another one through here, and a last one through here, but not like this. I rather have a triangle, so C key, and put this in here. Now let's see, shift tab, 
We hold these two edges very nicely, but not this one. So I select these two, go to Vertex Map, Edge Way Tool, 20%, click in here, and now that looks good. So now I can uh, mirror this over the X, apply over the Y, apply, then go to Vertex, Merge, Merge the words, 23, yeah, looks good. Hit the M key and say the material is horizontal. <clears throat> now I select this jigsaw piece, Control copy Control v hit the E key and rotate it, Control rotate it by 90 degree, W key, and this must be three millimeters. It's very important that we work very precise here, otherwise uh, the result will not be what we expect. So M key again, this is vertical. Now we have assigned the materials, drop the tool, deselect everything. I go to duplicate, clone, clone this five times. So we have a total of 12 jigsaw parts in one row. So um, click in here, control red handle and this must be six millimeters. Drop the tool. Now I select everything here, control copy, control V, W key bring this down uh, minus three and to the side by three millimeters. Yes, like so. Now I want to clone this here, duplicate, clone, uh, number is four and we must put this minus six in the Y. By the way, when we have so many polygons, the commands work much better when entered in here instead of doing it interactively. So drop the tool, go to basic, um, center select it all, hit the A key, go to deform, bend, select the bend in here, 40 millimeters, remember this, not 36, and we want to bend around the Y, perspective, and you see, if I would only bend it by minus 360 degrees. It has a gap in here. And this is why I use these numbers. It's easy to calculate. And because the spine here is 40 millimeters, we have to bend it by minus 400 degrees. And now you see it looks okay. Drop the tool, go to basic, center selected all. <clears throat> I get rid of the grid, go to front view, hit the N key for a new mesh, select the sphere, control, bring this one out to about here, drop the tool, tap to go out of uh, sub D mode, hit the D key twice, three times, and bring this in the middle, go back to the original mesh, hit the F11 key, activate constraint to background mode, press the R key, and let's say, I say 700% on all the axes, and now it just must wait a bit. 
I will not start to sing, sing to make time go by faster. But anyway, it's already done. I am completely impressed how some of these complex functions, how robust they are implemented, like the bend, the thicken, and the constraint to background. I'm very much impressed by these functions. So we don't need to see this. Now, drop the tool, look at this. Doesn't this look nice? Now, we go to the thicken, so polygon, thicken, minus 1.5 millimeters. I did this before already. Apply, and it's already done. Now we can shift, tap this, and bang, here we are. Look at this. I don't know what it's good for, but it looks really good. So I will get rid of um, the wireframe and leave this on as usual for a while so I can select it as my thumbnail. You can play with uh, the materials. You could, for example, select one of the materials, the horizontal or the vertical, put the action center to origin and then enlarge it. And this gives uh, very nice effects. You can, for example, put different metal materials and play around with it. It looks cool. I very much liked to do this. So thanks again for watching. Take care and have fun modeling with Modo. See you some other time and put in a comment if you have a suggestion of what I could do. Thanks a lot. See you. Bye bye.